Today I want to talk about the Safe Life Defense Flexible Rifle Rated Armor. This stuff's awesome. It's rated for 5.56 and AK. Now I'm talking green tip 5.56. Awesome stuff. I love this stuff. I love it. If you want to know why I love it, watch the rest of the video. Hey, coming right there. <laughs> Uh, hey, Jens Carr here with Tactical Rifleman. I'm out in the hot August heat in the middle of Western Kentucky. So glad that I'm not overseas still wearing body armor because I've worn body armor in August in the Middle East, in Africa. And guys, body armor is hot. Body armor is hot. A lot of people don't want to wear it, but again, it's needed. It's part of, uh, part of doing combat. So Today, this week, I want to talk a little bit about the, the history of armor. I want to share some uh, new products for you. All right, so uh, what I've got right here, this is, this is an old flak jacket dating all the way back to Vietnam era. All right, um, it, we call it a flak jacket because it won't stop bullets. It's not designed to stop bullets. It's designed to stop shrapnel. When that artillery round or mortar round comes in, a rocket detonates and throws shrapnel everywhere. That shrapnel slows down quickly, but it's still, for a certain distance, it's still quite lethal. Uh, but these are these are not perfect projectiles. So anyways, this is tight. Uh, and later on, you got into the invention of Kevlar and everything else. But this is not designed to stop bullets. It wraps around up under the armpits. You'll notice that it even has a collar. That's to protect the neck. Now, the... Most of your injuries in combat, are, you know, because what sticks up first is that head. So if you go watch an old World War II movie, I even uh, movies about World War I, everyone wore helmets because that was that part that was most exposed. After, and you can get into how ballistic eyes, just wearing simple sunglasses, guys, can literally cut out 95% of all of the eye injuries in uh, the Vietnam era. Simple sunglasses could have prevented 95% of those injuries. So any kind of armor is better than nothing, right? So uh, back in the day, that's, you know, it's zippered up in the front, uh, but you can see that it's, it's got weight to it, but it's, it's flexible. But the one thing I want you to note is, uh, look how big that back panel is, all right? It covers, it wraps all the way around the side of your torso, covers the neck shrapnel hitting you if it hits you in the leg or an extremity i can put a tourniquet on that your buddy can put a tourniquet on that you can't put tourniquets on the torso right so anyways that's uh our basic body armor that that this is what we used to run guys this was the standard even our carriers during desert storm i'm old i'm dating myself i was in desert storm with the 101st airborne we still wore flak jackets slightly newer design but basically the same, all right? Now, other people wear armor too. You, uh, you look at what law enforcement wears and they basically wear, uh, we, we call it second chance body armor. It's actually the name of a company that made some of the first second chance body armor. It is designed to be basically worn under your uniform shirt. It's very, very flexible. Um, and all it is is it's just layers of Kevlar cloth. And then you can, you can add plates you can stick ballistic plates up into it but for the most part a, a lot of officers they don't run the added plates they would just run their flexible body armor good stuff uh how good is it uh, if you go back some of our videos this is a smaller carrier but same rating it's just smaller cut because it's actually from a female law enforcement officer this is the one that me and emery shot with his 500 desert eagle Literally, I mean, we shot it. Now, you'll notice it pushed the material out, but I can still feel the projectile in there, guys. That that 50 Desert Eagle round is still right there. Now, the problem with just running soft armor like this is, yeah, it stopped a Desert Eagle round, but where it pushed that material in, that literally stuck into my rubber mannequin. Right, it actually pushed the material inside my rubber mannequin. The blunt force trauma of that bullet hitting you on your torso, right there over the center of your chest, will not just shatter the sternum, uh, but you're getting that blunt force trauma. What's right behind your sternum? Your heart. 
you deliver that blow to the heart. It's basically me taking a sledgehammer, catching you in the center of the chest, and it's gonna kill you. It is gonna kill you. So that's why uh, we like rifle rated plates, plates that will actually dissipate that energy. So instead of all that energy being focused on a narrow width of that bullet, 50 caliber in this case, it's spread out over the whole panel. This is a, a metal plate, but by that bullet hitting right there, it disperses that energy out over that whole part of the chest. So anyways, there's um, pros and cons to it. Some law enforcement officers don't wear armor at all. Um, most do, unfortunately, because of our current climate, they need to. It's sad, but th they really need to. Now, all right, now, military armor still has the focus on soft armor, all right? This is all soft armor plating all the way around the sides. Now, this is a little more modern than the old Desert Storm stuff. This would go right up over the top of your head. Uh, Velcro's around on the side. Now, yes, I know it would be in MAR pattern for the Marine Corps. It would be in ACU or multi-cam for the Army. I got that. All right, but you'll notice uh, you can add on extra soft armor to cover your deltoids. You can add on uh, Velcro collars that have the soft armor in them to, again, just like the old Vietnam era flak jackets, to protect the neck. And then, of course, our soldiers, sailors, and Marines all have their helmets on their heads. But it's the soft armor that's protecting them from that shrapnel. Now, they still have the plates that are inserted, but for the most part, the plates only cover just the center. That high A zone that I teach you to shoot at is designed to protect the heart Part of the lungs, yes, but for the most part, we're trying to protect all that major plumbing right there. All right, so that's that's why we run ballistic plates. All right, now you can add, like I said, you can add the soft armor and everything. This has a lot more weight, or roughly the same weight as that Vietnam jacket that I showed you, except this, guys, is not how we run this stuff. What we do is we take this plate carrier and Military guys are required to run tons of other gear. So you've got your magazines for your primary rifle, all right? A lot of guys will have to carry a radio. We've got to have med kits on the back. Now, my old unit, we would run four flashbangs across our back. Med gear, this is for buddy aid for somebody to reach me. My personal self-aid med gear, I'd keep on the back of my belt and I'd keep a tourniquet where I could reach it. I'd also keep another tourniquet on the front of my body armor where I could get to it. But you start adding extra magazines for not just your rifle, but for also your sidearm. Everybody runs a knife. Uh, you start adding flashbangs and firing charge, uh, uh, explosive breaching charge, firing systems. You start adding all that extra stuff. And then now this has got the soft armor in it. But if I start adding plates front and back to it, and now I start adding side plates to the side pockets, right? Because I still have to have my protection on the side. You see how this, it really starts to add more and more mass, but it also adds more and more weight to it. Not the end of the world, but this is the standard. Now, um, some of them have a cool feature like this one right here. My old unit, we had this cutaway pillow right here. If you pulled this loop, it would cut away on the shoulders and the sides. It would fall off of you. So if the helicopter went down in the Gulf of Aden, for example, when a helicopter hits the water, it immediately flips upside down. If the striker or MRAP you're riding in rolls into a 12 foot deep canal filled with water, you need to be able to get out of the vehicle and getting out 12 guys trying to crawl out one hatch or the back of a MH-46 with all this gear on, you're just not gonna be able to swim. You're not gonna be able to do all that. So we, we have the cutaway pillow, armor cuts away, that still leaves you with your gun belt. I've still got magazines for my primary rifle. I've still got my side arms. I've still got my medical gear because I'm here to tell you, if you're in a helicopter crash, even if you swim to the surface, somebody's still gonna need medical gear. You've gotta keep that stuff with you, you really do. So that's not the focus now. The, the sexy body armor now is everybody's gotten away from the normal military, conventional military armor, and everybody's going to um, plate carriers. 
This right here is my ATS plate carrier. I have it on my ballistic gel mannequin right here. Now, the Focus, it's just got three magazines, one spare uh, pistol mag, um, because everything else, remember, everything else is on my, my belt, right? Now, you look at this, it's very, very streamlined. It's very, very uh, slick. It looks sexy. It looks high speed. It's multi-cam. It's got to be sexy. It's got to be sexy stuff, right? Now, um, why is that? The, because the focus is on right now to be able to move quickly, to be as light as possible, because you've got to climb those mountains in Afghanistan. You've got to run quickly down the center of that train or that airplane. You've got to be able to move through that building quickly to get to that high value target or to get to those hostages. So everybody wants to be able to move quickly. So we keep everything really, really light, really, really slick. Oh, no, don't get me wrong, you can add the side plates to the side. It's got, it's got the pockets to do that. You can add the side plates to it, right? Um, this is slick. If you look at all the Pew Pew guys out on the range doing all their videos on Instagram, guys, this is all they're wearing. That's what they're wearing right there. That's it, it's sexy. They look sexy, pew pew, pew pew. That's awesome. That's not real life, guys. This is the exact same plate carrier, exact same plate carrier. But this is the one that I actually wore in Iraq a couple of my last deployments. All right, now, I've run my magazines on the side, right? Now, you've only got so much real estate and you have to carry, I'm gonna call you, carrying too much stuff. Pause that thought because I'm only carrying mission essential gear. To do pew pew, you don't need a radio, all right? But I have to have my radio with my push the talk button with my antenna on the back, ran up across my back with my, so I can plug in my headphones, my Pelter headset inside my helmet. I have to have comms. I have to have my radio. I have to have uh, my tourniquet on the, on the front where I can reach it with either hand. Remember I mentioned having uh, buddy aid stuff, the bed pouch on the back so my buddy can treat me, right? Now my unit SOP flashbangs on the back, we also changed to running a couple on the front where you could get to them yourself. Sometimes you can't just pull security while the guy takes them off your back. So running flashbangs, running firing systems for your explosive charges, tourniquets, everything else. Now it looks like Carl, you're carrying way too much crap. I'm not, this is only 50 ounces of water on the back. All right. I've only got one pouch for carrying one spare frag grenade. Well, why do you need a frag grenade? You don't need a frag grenade to do pew pew on the range, right? But if you're going to be getting off of a helicopter on a mountain, you are not going to be able to get by with just three magazines. You need to be able to carry that full basic load. Sometimes you want a double basic load. Huh. So now I'm going from seven magazines to 14, right? You see what I'm getting at? You have to use that real estate. So all of a sudden, gents, that's not that much sexier than the one with the soft armor in it, right? Not that much sexier, it's really not. So um, the push for plate carriers, everybody likes plate carriers. They're sexy, they don't, but the only difference between a plate carrier and regular military body armor is this doesn't have the soft armor. The, why is that? The focus, remember, is we're talking close quarters battle, stuff like that. And the reality is, is there's, there's no artillery coming in when you're inside of a building doing, close, doing CQB, close quarters battle. There's no artillery indoors. Yeah, I, I want to caution our young war fighters on that because there is still shrapnel inside of a building. Um, frag grenades, RPGs, things like that. So, uh, a good example of that, and I don't, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to use people's names without asking their permission. But uh, battle in the Joff in 2004, uh, yeah, down in the Joff. The reason why that whole battle kicked off was one of the A teams from my company was assigned down there at Camp David. They went to go do a hit. They didn't. Supposed to be three or four bad guys there. They didn't realize that the Mahdi militia had moved into the place. So they hit a building that was supposed to have three or four bad guys. There's like 20 or 30 bad guys there. They're trying to fight their way up this, a set of stairs, and somebody throws a frag grenade over the stairs, blows up on the ground. 
tore, tore a bunch of guys up. It did, tore a bunch of guys up. Um, one of the guys, I, he ended up getting kicked out of the company because he was on uh, medical rehab for years, all right? Um, Rick, I love you, brother. I'm not gonna throw your name out there, but one of the things that Rick said, because what happened is a frag grenade landed amongst them. The shrapnel went up right below his plate carrier to the side. He wasn't running side plates. He wasn't running soft armor. And it went in and it shredded his liver. He lost a lot of his liver. Now, the one thing he said before they put him on that Nightingale medevac bird to bring him back all the way uh, to uh, Frankfurt, Germany, was he said, I wish I was wearing my soft armor instead of just a plate carrier. Food for thought. Food for thought. All right. Everybody loves their pew pew. Everybody wants to run just a plate carrier. The reality is, guys, is you need more coverage. You do. There's a reason why those Marine commanders would make the guys wear their deltoid covers and their groin uh their ground, groin plate and their, their necks. It's uncomfortable, the Marines hate it, but I understand why the Marine colonels would do that. Colonel Buell, I supported you back in Fallujah doing that. You know I did, right? Um, unfortunately, with the wraparound soft armor, we quickly go back to soft armor doesn't stop rifle rounds. So you need more wraparound rifle rounds. Why is that? Um, Again, another story, I, I, I won't use the names, may he rest in peace. Uh, there was a Marine senior lieutenant coming up to make captain, and uh, instead of staying in the Marine Corps, he wanted to go to Special Forces Selection, which back then you could go to SF Selection if you passed, you could transfer to the Army, go to the Q course, and he would have been possibly my next uh, A-team commander. He could have been a captain on my A-team. I was a master sergeant at the time. Great, uh, great senior lieutenant. He was an XO in a Marine company. Second battle, Fallujah kicks off. He's moving down the street with some of his guys and a guy from the second story aimed down and um, bullet came in from above where his, uh, from above where his side plates would have been, right? Completely missed his uh, sappy plate on the front and went right through at an angle, ended up double lunging him. And uh, yeah, I actually stopped by out there, visited their command center uh, specifically just to stop and say hi to this, this uh, young Lieutenant, see how he was doing. And they're like, Master Sergeant, didn't you hear uh, he got killed yesterday. Okay. My point is, it's not about being sexy. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. No matter how much armor you wear, if it's that, if it's if your number's up, your number's up. That bullet comes in, it'll pass right above the plate. It'll catch you in a subclavian neurovascular bundle. It'll blow all that plumbing out. You know where all the, where everybody gets shot in the movies, right? Arnold always gets shot through the shoulder and he's perfectly fine, perfectly fine, fights on, cringes a little bit. All my video game players, you get a little red around the edge, you, you, you hide behind the wall and all of a sudden you're back to life again. That's not real life. Real life is if you're hit, brother, you're hit. All right, so wouldn't it be nice to have rifle rated body armor that could wrap all the way around your sides like that soft armor would? Enter flexible rifle armor system by Safe Light Defense. I got some of it right here. Thank you, Safe Light Defense, for letting me do a review of this stuff. Guys, this stuff is completely flexible. Look at that. That's the middle of the chest. This is the middle of the back. Guys, this is completely flexible armor. Completely flexible. All right, now, um, you see our mannequin here, right? This is standard plate carrier, right? Standard plate carrier. I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna mark roughly where he is protected. I'm gonna draw it up on the sides and I don't need to do it on the back guys cause you're gonna get the, you're gonna get the message. All right, I'm gonna put my marker back. 
I'll pull my plate carrier off of my torso here. Ah, that stuff's heavy. Now, I'm gonna take my wraparound armor. I'll put it back onto my torso. I'm gonna wrap it around the sides. Look at that, that stuff is damn near touching on the side over here. All right. That looks centered, Chad. All right, guys, still roughly the same right there. I can see my line. I'm protected all the way up to here where my line was down here. I've got my subclavian neuro, neurovascular bundle protected. On the sides, though, now this is not sized right for my, my mannequin here, but it is designed to be completely closed on the side. So if I was to bring this, if I didn't, if I brought that together like that, you'll see that it would enclose on both sides of my mannequin here. It really would. Completely enclosed. There's so much more coverage with this here. So much more coverage. All right, now, the weight. Now, um, much, much more coverage, but if you were to take just the, the frass system and put it up against the, the same amount of plate coverage, this is, this is basically equal to six plates, guys. Four to six plates, depending on what size normal plates you wear. Because like uh, most people run medium plates. I'm here to tell you all my plates were uh, large and extra large. And then sometimes I'd run four side plates, right? Um, because you want all that coverage. You add all those plates together, especially if you're going up against metal armor, there's so much more weight with this. So weight's not, weight is not an issue here, all right? Now, the, but even if it was, let's say, oh, Carl, that's two pounds heavier than my plate carrier, all right? Now, I wanna caution you here. Let's talk weight distribution because the, the frass panels, they wrap all the way around the side and that distributes that weight across your whole torso. It really does. All right, and the other thing is these panels don't sag. Right? They don't sag like a lot of normal metal panels will, where you're, you're moving left, right, and the, the metal plates start shifting, or just the plates in your loose plate carrier start shifting. Right Now, uh, the panels are interchangeable, so if you want one uh, carrier that doesn't have the molly on it, so you can uh, wear it EDC, uh, low-vis ops, whatever, if you're on a Jedberg team, anything like that, working behind enemy lines, okay? You can still use these same flexible rifle armor system plates inside the slick carrier that doesn't have all the added thickness of the added cloth, right? So it's, it's cool, it's cool. Now, some people I've heard say, oh, uh, that, that's safe life defense stuff. That's just, like, uh, that's, that's just like that dragon scale stuff that they had on uh, Modern Weapons, uh, the TV show. I saw that too, I saw, I watched that episode and when it came out, I was like, all right, that's, that's kind of cool. Flexible body armor that's rifle rated, that would be awesome. The problem though is there's no overlapping tiles in this like there are in the, uh, in the dragon skin. The dragon skin is basically big panels that lay on you like uh, leaves on a tree, basically. You've seen the old, uh, knights in shining armor from the Middle e medieval ages, well, a lot of them would have uh, scale mail. That same type thing is what uh, dragon scale armor was designed around. Small ceramic panels that overlapped, right? Now, what that does is, because it's overlapping, you've got so much more material than is needed. So dragon skin armor is so much heavier than this stuff. All right, and the other thing, because the panels are not overlapping, they're, they're touching each other, perfect. There's so much more contact with the actual backing, the, the, the uh, Kevlar type material cloth behind it. Those ceramic panels are all touching it uniformly. So it just makes it, uh, there's, in other words, there's no dead spaces. And what I mean by dead spaces, because everybody's like, well, it doesn't matter if it overlaps. If you hit where there's an overlap, the dragon skin gives you twice as much protection. It does, except 
I'm not a pew pew guy. I'm not just shooting like this, right? You need to stop thinking two-dimensional two range. My students hear me say that all the time. You need to think 360, but not just this way, rounds coming in from any direction, but also from above. Think the stairwell above you, all right? The second story building, the, the rooftop. Now, dragon skin, dragon scale uh, body armor would protect you. However, you also have to think below you. Well, you're up on the stairs and someone's shooting up at you or that frag grenade gets thrown down from the roof, lands on the ground, or the, the guy in front of you steps on an IED like, saws, uh, like Chad's saw gunner. The shrapnel blows up at an angle. All that shrapnel would be passing right up between your dragon scales going to the sweet meat that's underneath. That's you. Right, so I'm not a big fan of dragon skin. Right, so, well, how does it work, Carl, if it's not dragon skin, uh, dragon scales, what is it? I appreciate you asking. I just happen to have another plate here, all right? Another set, again, Safe Life Defense. Thank you for letting me have two to tear up. You pull out that panel. I'm gonna pull out the panel. And they're easy, guys. They'll slide in and out of different carriers. But if you actually get into it, this is the side facing enemy. I'm gonna pull it out. We are gonna insert. Now on the back, you guys can see it. These are all the different layers of your ballistic cloth. Just like soft armor, it's regular soft armor cloth. All right, on the front, you've got that thin little piece all right, protect it. But if I take that off, gents, these are all individual ceramic panels, hexagon shaped, and they are designed that when they're sitting normal, there's no gap in them at all, all right? If you hit this one, of course, the bullet's gonna shatter it. Bullet's gonna shatter that plate, guaranteed. That piece of ceramic, Got a fragment. Oh, well, now you got a hole in your vest that's no good. All right, now, remember, most military plates are only good for one round. Right? Now, the soft guys run 10 hit plates. They've got to be able to take 10 hits. But that's not 10 hits in the same place. Plus, catch this. Because it's got the sealer over the top of it, when you shatter that ceramic piece right there, that one, when you shatter that one, this is holding all those broken pieces of ceramic right there. Yeah, the ceramic's broken, but the shards are still there. So even if another bullet comes in right nearby, it's still hitting the ceramic and deforming the bullet before it gets to all the ballistic nylon behind it. So anyways, guys, this, I, I can't say enough about how awesome I think this design is. I think this design is awesome. Now, how awesome is it? They say threat level. Now, uh, threat level this vest right here. Now you saw me bend it. You saw how easily this thing bends. Flexible rifle armor system by Safe Life Defense it is proposed to be able to take green tip. That's an M855, guys. And it's supposed to be able to stop 762 by 39 soft core. All right. The, I think it's an M26. Those are the two rounds. It is guaranteed. To stop, and the reason why they pick those is well, level three armor or level three alpha, whichever one it is. But that's those are like the most common threats that our law enforcement guys are gonna that they're gonna face. Now, they're coming out with a full level three frass that'll stop 308 and 762 by 54, uh, and that'll be available for our military in the near future. But for right now, this is supposed to stop green tip green tip and AK rounds. Mm. We can't have a tactical rifleman video without shooting. What do you say we put it to the test? Let's see what this puppy right here, not this one, I took this one apart already. Let's shoot the perfectly good one on our torso right here. First round we're gonna shoot is 55 grain soft core 5.56. Shooting it out of the new coveted TR1 rifle from Tactical Edge.
All right, so this is a 55 grain soft core 556. Hit it right here, huh, funny, right where I was aiming. All right, hold a little high, Y or offset. You guys remember this stuff. Guys, I got a small hole in the back, and I, I, that's just the hole in the soft outer covering. But the, the uh, ballistic cloth in the back stopped around, stopped it as intended. Gents, there's no hole in our guy, huh? Rifle rated. Supposed to stop 5.56, five, ah, but it's supposed to stop 5.56 five, green tip, the M855 ammo that's what's got that steel uh, core in the middle of it let's give that one a try all right we're going to try this again with 556 five, green tip this is the m855 with the uh, penetrator in it steel core it's, it's not really a penetrator not why they did it but it's considered a barrier penetrating round great for windshields car doors and we'll see how it does against uh, the safe life defense body armor Mm, that's going to leave a mark right there. All right, gents, so this was the 556 five, green tip, the M855. I hit right there. All right, I, what I'm trying, you notice I'm keeping them close together. Why? Man, eh, because it's more fun if stuff fails. I want to see if this stuff actually fails. Now remember the plates I used to run in my body armor were multi-hit plates. They're hard, solid, but they were designed to take 10 hits. Not all in one place though. Supposed to be able to survive 10 hits. We're already two hits into this. Uh, again, expanded it, shattered that ceramic up front. I've got zero penetration inside. Would have hurt, but the guy's still very, very much alive. Let's try that AK. All right, this arm is also supposed to be rated for AK. This is 123 grain uh, full metal jacket, soft core. It's lead core, not armor piercing. And uh, we'll see how it goes. We will, we'll see how it goes. All right, we'll see how it did. All right, so we just hit it with the AK. This is 762 by 39, 123 grain full metal jacket. Hit it right here. Guys, just pushing in with my finger, I can feel how the ceramic is just shattered right there. But again, there, there's zero penetration on the inside of our vest here. All right, I'm impressed. That's what it's rated for. Um, I think I'm gonna try something else. Let's do 300 blackout. All right, we're gonna plug it with some 220 grain, 300 blackout. Now this is subsonic, I'm not running a suppressor, but you get the idea, all right? So we'll do this right here. What, what the, mother, what, 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 it's, dude? No, I, I know it's weird, he, he's with me. Actually, you know what? Yeah, go ahead. All right. If it bleeds, we can kill it. We can kill it. What's up, everybody? My name is Scott, and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. My channel. Oh, My oh. Channel. Uh, so are you, you? Welcome back to Tactical Rifleman. Yeah, I'm that's right. Here with Scott, how you doing, brother? How you good. Doing? All right, all right. Kentucky Ballistics, Tactical Rifleman. We're both in Kentucky, and. Uh, well, thanks for coming out. Hey, thanks for having me out. You have already done a video on this, so I'm yes. kind of just copying your content. Right? No, no, not at all. You've got different calibers today. Ish, ish, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> so here's what we've done. We've already shot it with 5.56 and AK. Uh, what are some of the other weird rounds you hit it with in your video? Um, I used uh, 45.70, 30-06. Hunting rounds, big hunting, hunting rounds. rounds. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I used some uh, some big bore handguns, and I may have one over there that I brought with me. We hate it when that happens. What do you guys <laughs> say? What do you say? We bring out Kentucky Ballistics to join us in the jackassery. Let's do this. All right, let's wrap up the two the uh, three hundred blackout. Okay. And uh, it's subsonic, two hundred and twenty grain. I got a feeling it'll survive. I think it's gonna eat it. I'm gonna try to shoot for a spot where I've already hit before. All right, we're gonna go just a little bit lower on it. And, ooh, that's gonna be an ugly one. I think All it right. went through. 
I don't think it did. <laughs> I don't think it did. All right, gents, so we've got a 300 blackout, subsonic, 220 grains, hit right here. Again, you've played with this. You know it shatters a little ceramic, uh, it's squishy. Guys, that ballistic gel is completely unscathed. Looking clean. Let's go bigger. All right. Let's do it. Let's go bigger. All right, what are we going to shoot it with? Got a 12 gauge. 12 gauge. We got two what and three quarter inch double lot buck. Sweet. You ready? Yep. All right. Nice. Oh, that's going to leave a mark. Ah, yeah, for sure. I wouldn't want to be the gel dummy. I'll tell you what. Uh, hit him with a slug while we're slug. here. Slug. Slug. All right, I'll put it right to the right of that. Just to the right of it. That sounds good to me. Leaked a little bit of ceramic. That was ugly. <laughs> I'm not sure it made it through that one. All right, so he shot it with the buckshot. <laughs> nice and tight, guys. This has got a, this is my competition Versamax. It's got a nice tight uh, pattern on yeah, it. That is tight. Hit it solid, uh, zero penetration. Then we hit it with the slug. This is the part where I tell you where it failed, except it didn't fail. Didn't fail. It didn't fail, but it, <laughs> it, Hit this plate, shattered all the ceramic there, and you can just tell it just expanded all that cloth in the back, the ballistic cloth. There's zero penetration, but I guarantee, would you want to have wore this vest? No, no, you would have felt that one. You would have felt that for <laughs> sure. Let's go bigger. All right. All right, let's go bigger. All right, so the 224 Valkyrie. Ah. Maximum sexiness, long barrel, 3,300 feet per second. This puppy's gonna be flying. I'm curious. I don't know if I've got enough scope to see that far. <laughs> All right, let's go right about, ooh. Ooh. We'll let's see. Check it out. We'll check it out. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not sure where you shot. I kind of... Right there. Okay, got mixed in with the buckshot. And it went through. Shit. It did. It got mixed in with the buckshot. And here's why. We got all the ceramic laying out on the table. But yeah. That, well, that was from there. It didn't go well. Yeah, that's a, that's a dead yeah. dude right there. Hey, <laughs> the good news is, is it wouldn't have hit your buddy behind you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so... Full disclosure, I probably shouldn't shot where he just ate it up with the buckshot, but I shot where uh, where he had just peppered it with the buckshot, and it did. The 224 Valkyrie moving at 3,300 feet per second, uh, we got penetration. Yep. You're saying that if I used a virgin piece of tile, yep. a nice, clean, unshot human being with brand new brass armor, you might be all right? I think you might be all right. Because that's already damaged. Maybe, maybe we can hit a little lower where it's right, not let's damaged. Do it. And let's do it. I'll hit him one more time. The good news about that, though, is at least your buddy behind you is all right. Your buddy's fine. <laughs> buddy's fine. All right, so let's hit it again. Uh, I'll try to pick some virgin armor this time. <laughs> I think you hit it. I like virgin. I'm curious. Virgins are awesome. I think we're all set. Uh, right. There you go. Weird. Oh, I'm really curious to see if that went through or not, because that thing's moving. It is moving. Nope. Nothing. Nothing. All right. Uh, he was correct. If, the, if it had been virgin armor there, um, clean. Ceramic tile. Yeah. And it ate it. It ate it. It ate it. Now, it's bulged a lot. It's got a lot of energy. That bullet's huck a yeah. That son of a gun's moving out. But, uh, yeah. I think we're good. Let's go bigger. Still would have hurt. Still would have hurt. Let's go bigger. <laughs> so apparently I'm not the only one that likes big boar. Emery likes the the gold desert eagle. This is nice. That's sexy. That's I like sexy. it a lot. Emery said, 
Carl, if you're going to shoot it, you've got to use the Desert Eagle. <laughs> all right, all right. Maybe I'll that be was happy Jerry to do the thought. honors. I, I don't think I've shot a gold Desert Eagle. So this is the first time. That's a yeah. case of beer right there. That's awesome. Ooh, that's smooth. You ready? <laughs> On you. Okay. You want me to hit a fresh spot? Yeah, fresh spot. Ooh. Caught some brass in the face. <laughs> I got a little mark. Did you really? Oh, you're still pretty, <laughs> brother. Still pretty. Nice. I'll keep that locked open. I think right there. Yeah, that's right there. Nothing. Clean. Clean. All right, 50 Desert Eagle. Uh, it's not far from where we crushed it with all the rest of this stuff. Mm -mm. And uh, yeah, we still got nothing going through it except that uh, two, 224 Valkyrie. Yeah, the man, the soft armor that's behind that ceramic is super tough. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. I'll see your 50, and I'll raise you. All right. All right I'll see your 50 AE, and I'll raise you... 500 Beowulf. Nice. Check that son of a gun. I like right that. There. I like and that setup altogether. That's pretty cool. This is another one of Emery's guns. Oh, okay. Right. Not that Emery's compensating for anything. Emery's yeah, actually me, looking at using this for either. breaching, <laughs> breaching doors. So I like his taste though. We, uh, Emery's awesome. Just not that awesome. All right, here we go. That's a hard hit right yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Nothing. Nope. All right, so a nice clean shot. Look how clean that hole is, dude. It's a big dude. hole. That's a big hole. <laughs> That's a big hole. I wish you guys could appreciate this from the side. That vest is now about this thick. It would have hurt. But it didn't go through. It did mm -hmm. not go through at all. I got a feeling if you hit a guy with a good three to five round zipper drill, working it up to his tee box, he might go down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, got For a sure. feeling. Bigger? Bigger. All right, well, I brought something that Emery would probably like. You I know, think Emery would another like Another compensation that. gun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, eight and three eighths inch barrel. And I got this guy. It's a unique round. It's made by Double Tap. And this is 480 grains, <laughs> but it's two bullets. So you've two. got a so jacketed hollow point. Okay, yeah. And then you've got a hard cast underneath it. So there should be two spots so, on our armor. Inshallah, we shall see. Yeah, I think it'll be pretty cool. I, I don't think the armor's gonna stop it, but <laughs> it'll be cool. See that? Two, holes. two holes. It's definitely two <laughs> holes for sure. Nice. All right, I'll keep that open. So what do we got? We got two holes. We're Just supposed to have two. Two holes, yeah, okay. and it stopped both rounds. But I tell you what, man, I would not want to get hit with that. Definitely that not. That cloth is stuck to that gel really hard. We're talking about <laughs> is the ballistic gelatins actually welded to the back of the cloth of the vest here. And just think about how much pressure it would take to do that. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That really is. That yeah, really man. is. Let's, All right. Let's do some let's, more. Let's do better this time. Maybe not bigger. Let's do better. All right. We've already shot it with the 556 five, green tip. That's the M855. Five, five. Okay. How about the M855A1? Five, five, this Ooh. is the new bullet with the external steel penetrator. It's like a little arrow point on the top. Oof, man. I don't know about that one. I don't it's know. It's built for... <laughs> penetrating barriers, yeah. i.e. windshields, car doors, um, rifle rated body armor. I think it's gonna do, the, do its job right now, honestly. I'll tell you what. Um, I'm curious. Safe life defense, in your defense, <laughs> it, it's, it has far surpassed what we both thought it would take. Um, we just, you understand, we still have to kill it. it we have to, it's like a law, yeah. it's like a law. Absolutely. Right. Through the coveted TR1 rifle built that tactical edge. That's awesome. Think, this thing not I like it. 
All right, here we go. I'm pretty sure that was magic. All right, let's see. We shall see. Oh, right there. I, that's why I couldn't see where you hit. And it flew straight through. Yeah, it did. I don't think it made it. Did not go all the way through. It's sitting right here. Yeah. All right. Now, I was pretty sure this was going to happen. I'll be honest, it did. I'm going to turn it sideways for you here. Yep. It passed through, and I was actually expecting the steel tip to pass completely through the mannequin, and it didn't, uh, which means this armor slowed this thing enough not just to stop the brass milled part, but also to stop the steel penetrator. It did penetrate. This guy's, that, that's, a, that's a heart shot right there. Yeah, this guy's a training loss. <laughs> but uh, it's still very, very impressive. Very, very impressive. And we've still got plenty of virgin vest. We still got plenty to go. Let's, let's do some more. All right, so that is my favorite 308 pistol. 12 and a half inch Adams Arms 308 with the Griffin scope I just did a review on, by the way. It's slick. That is M80 ball, 7.62 by 51. Okay. Uh, let's see what it'll do. You're hitting it with a lot of weight right here. Let's see what it'll do. All right. Ooh. That's gonna leave a mark right there. I'll tell you what, before you leave, that was M80 ball, red right. core, copper jacket. Let's try the M80A1, just like we did that with the 556. Five, Let's try the new improved round. This is the improved machine gun round with the steel tip on it. Okay. Well, let's throw that at it. I, I don't think it's going to stop that. I don't that. think so either. But, yeah. Uh, that's not going to be good. All right, I'll just go find right some below virgin. It find some virgin. Nice. Yeah, that I, definitely yeah, went through. Hold on one second there. Work. I'm not thinking. <laughs> oh shit. M80 ball, 7.62 by 51, lead core, full metal jacket. Uh, Scott caught it right here. Didn't go through. Now it opened that vest up like a like a softball. It really did. <laughs> more, more like a baseball. You messed that boy up. It, yeah, it would suck to be him. It actually <laughs> turned the mannequin a little bit. Now, I then had him shoot the new improved round, the M80A1, that has the milled brass projectile with the steel tip on it. He caught it right here. Again, that's virgin, virgin ceramic. That's a cool part about these small tiles is you get that hit, you're only shattering that one small spot. So if a guy zips you up with his AK, zip, 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 all three of those shots are virgin uh, ceramic. So, yeah, virgin ceramic didn't help this guy. I wouldn't Not think at all. so. All right, uh, completely passed through the back, completely penetrated our ballistic gel uh, <laughs> torso, and it actually went up did not penetrate the front of the vest. So I guess, as you say, your, yeah, your buddy will still be all right. Buddy's still all right. <laughs> buddy's still all right. So just have somebody stand in front of you. That's all. That's that's crazy. That was fun. Still cool though. It stopped that 308. Just the it did stop the 308. Full metal that jacket. right there, guys. Remember this. This armor's rated to stop 762 by 39. That standard AK round. It it. Easily stopped 762 by 51. Yeah, yeah, that's a big deal. It is cool let's stuff, but yeah, I was gonna say, I think, I think we got a little more. Let's go, let's do more. <laughs> All right, for the grand finale, <laughs> my tactical rifleman channel 50 BMG through my Barrett. I'm really excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one thing I didn't hit my vest with, so I'm excited. I'm here to tell you, dude, there's just nothing better than... Dude, the concussion coming off that thing back here. If, <laughs> if I had hair, 
It would be uh, out here right now. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. I'm going to give him one more for shits and giggles. I got one more in there? Yeah, but my vest is turned sideways a little bit. Uh, got to get him from your side. Yeah. I was thinking forehead shot, right? <laughs> right through the face, between the <laughs> eyes. That's how we do it on Tactical Rifleman. Ah, uh, that's, but that's all you got, huh? Like you got, you got something. Dude, it's a parrot. I came prepared to win this compensation what? contest, okay? It's See, a parrot. You, Emory, everybody. All right. You just hold on. You got? What you do you got? You hold on. You cut the green wire to save the planet. Cut the green wire. Thank you. Now, this is how we do Dude. it. Dude. Whoa. Holy oh, shit. <laughs> you want to give it another? Or are you good? Dude, there's not much left. Uh, uh, hit it again. Well, I think we took care of uh, the best and everything. This, this, is where, this is where you rotate that selector level <laughs> if they're safe. <laughs> All right, Scott, thanks for coming out. Uh, <laughs> Thanks Scott for from me. Kentucky Ballistics. If you don't currently subscribe to his YouTube channel, trust me, you can see <laughs> this boy has a lot of fun. Thanks for coming out, adding a little extra fun for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me do some damage. I got Trump. My <laughs> Barrett 50 cal got Trump. Big shout out and thank you to Safe Life Defense for letting me have a couple sets of your armor to uh, tear up. Yes, it's badass. It is. Guys, it way surpassed the 5.56 in AK. We went to the umpteenth level, but it finally died. Everything <laughs> dies. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Dude, uh, that's all we got this week. We'll see you guys uh, next Friday. New video every Friday. And uh, check us out on uh, our, all of our other social media stuff, too. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything. If you like the shirt that we're wearing in the video, you can get it in our store.